Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving tips and tricks to working with chiffon. Chiffon is a very beautiful and delicate fabric as you can see here, but it can also be a pain in the neck to work with. So that's why it's good to have some tips. Now because it is so soft and airy, it's good to create garments from it that are also flowy and loose and doesn't have a lot of construction details because you can see that it is kind of see-through if your pattern has a lot of darts we're going to see that construction from the outside because we're just going to be able to see through it like with most fabrics it is important to pre-treat your fabric so you want to look on the label when you purchase it to see if it's washable or it's dry clean only I think one of the hardest parts in working with chiffon is just cutting out your pieces. It's because the fabric is so slippery and even if you think you're doing a good job cutting your stuff out, you could still end up with a piece that doesn't look so great. This edge right here, this is how it was cut at the fabric store and you know they have the little guideline that they're using and still you can see it's not straight. It's just because the fabric slips around as you're trying to cut it. So you have a few different options. Number one, what you can do is you can see under here, I have just regular tissue paper. I bought this at a store that sells the little gift tissue paper and I place it underneath my fabric. And what you can do is use some pins and pin it to your fabric. So once it's pinned to the tissue paper, then it's not gonna shift around as much. You can put in as many pins as you want and that's gonna kinda keep it into place and then we're gonna put our patterns on top of it cutting through all three layers and that's really going to help. Another option you can use is you can have some liquid stabilizer, some fabric stabilizer, or you can do some spray starch. You just need to make sure that your fabric's going to be washable if you do something like that because we don't want to leave the starch in there. So that's really going to stiffen up your fabric and then it's really going to stay in place and you don't have to worry about it shifting everywhere. Now when you do cut out your pattern pieces, you're going to want to make sure that you lay out your fabric so it's a single layer. So even though normally our fabric is folded in half so we can cut out one piece but get two fabric pieces, for this it's not a good idea. You want to do everything individually and only have one layer of fabric at a time. If you have pattern pieces that need to be placed on the fold, what you need to do is pin it draw an outline of it with some chalk if you can. Then you're going to unpin it, flip it, making sure the side that needs to be placed in the fold is butted up with the first pattern that you created or outline. Pin it and then you can draw an outline and then cut it out. That way you end up with a full size piece. For attaching your pattern pieces to your fabric in order to cut them out, you can use fabric weights if you use straight pins, I like to use these very fine pleating pins. You just want fine pins because we don't want to leave, leave any huge holes and we don't want to cause any snags. If you're doing the tissue paper trick, make sure that you're going through all three layers. When you're cutting it out, you want to either use really sharp scissors or you can also use a rotary cutter. Now for a rotary cutter, if you have a lot of curves, you want to make sure that you're using the really small rotary cutter blades. After you cut out your fabric pieces, you do still need to mark them. Now you have a couple of different options. You can use tailor tacks, and if you need a refresher on that, definitely check out our tutorial because we do have one. So you could mark tailor tacks for your circles or squares or whatever marks you have on your pattern. Some people also do not like to cut out notches out of their chiffon. Chiffon does tend to fray a lot, so that could be why. And then you can also use tailor tacks to mark that as well. Or if you do cut out your notches, you can use some of this little fabric sealant stuff and just put it on the edge of the fabric, just on the notches part, and that'll help cut down on the frame. Another option you can do is, I still have my tissue paper attached to the back of my fabric, and I'm going to leave it attached because it's gonna make my sewing a lot easier. You can mark the actual tissue paper on the back with your marks and then just leave it pinned to your fabric until you actually need your marks or you're sewing them together and then just remove the pattern piece from the front. For sewing through chiffon, I'm using just regular all-purpose thread, but you can use a finer thread such as silk thread. And for the needle, make sure that you change this to a new needle 
and you're using a sharp needle. The weight is for lightweight, so that's gonna be about a size that's 7010. You can see that I still have my tissue paper attached. This is what I meant by just leaving it attached. So the tissue paper is sandwiching the fabric in between and it really helps feed it through the machine evenly and nicely. Cause usually with chiffon, it tends to get sucked down through the needle plate and that's what makes it really hard to work with. I'm not doing any back stitching cause we'll just do a knot by hand when we finish with the seam. Also, my stitch lengths are a little bit shorter when you finish a seam, all you have to do is just tear off the tissue paper. So it's really easy to use, and then it's really easy to take off. And sometimes you have a few little scraps like this, but it's really easy to pull out. Now for hand tying your knots, let me go ahead and rip off this one so it makes it a little bit easier. All you're going to do, here I have my thread, just leave it a little bit long instead of cutting it short. You're just going to put it in a loop, put the end through the loop, and you're going to pull it, hopefully tight next to your fabric here. And then that's all you have to do, and then you can cut off the tail. To press your fabric, first you're going to take your seam and you're going to close it, press it to one side, and then go ahead and press it open. Now, as I mentioned before, because it is chiffon, it does tend to fray a lot, so we want to keep that in check. If you have a serger, you can use the serger to finish your raw edges, or if you have a regular sewing machine, you can go ahead and use a zigzag stitch on the edge as well. That should help. If it's still a problem, you can definitely use that fabric sealant again and just put it on the edge, and that will definitely take care of the fraying. Now, another ideal way, instead of doing the typical seam like I've shown here for chiffon, is doing the French seam. We do have a tutorial on that, but just to go over it, if this is my seam that I'm creating, instead of putting your pieces right side to right side and then sewing a seam, you actually put your pieces wrong side to wrong side. So it's flipped when you're doing the French seam. After you do your seam, if I'm doing a 5 8 seam, I'm gonna do my first seam at the 3 8 line. Then I'm going to trim off the raw edge and you're just trimming a little bit, about an eighth of an inch. Then you're going to, you can go ahead and press this. If you're looking now at this other side, you can see your seam line and you're going to fold it right on the seam line. Now, chiffon is very soft, so it's hard to get nice creases or anything like that, which you really don't want anyways. But you're kind of folding it like this and then going back and sewing at a quarter inch. So we have three eighths plus a quarter, that equals five eighths of a seam allowance total. So once you sew, all this raw edge is going to be enclosed and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this is now the right side of my fabric. On the wrong side, we still have a little bit of a seam allowance here, but it looks nice and neat. It's all enclosed and you don't have to worry about the fraying there. When it comes to hemming your garment made out of chiffon, a good idea is to hang up the garment overnight to let it relax and rest before you hem it. If you could do it in the bathroom, even better, because if you take a shower, the steam will also help get wrinkles out. So I'm gonna show you how to do a rolled hem, which is the recommended way that I think will make a very delicate hemline for a delicate fabric. We do have an in-depth tutorial for this if you would rather watch that, but I'm gonna quickly go over it. So I do a straight stitch along the bottom where I'm going to hem, making it about an eighth of an inch shorter than what the original hemline or hem allowance is supposed to be. So instead of an inch, maybe I'm doing seven eighths or three quarters. So that is going to be the distance from the edge to where my stitches are going to be. Looking at the wrong side, I'm then going to fold up the fabric to the wrong side so that these stitches that I just sewed end up right on that fold line and you're going to press it now you do need to be careful in ironing chiffon, you don't want it to be too hot. So it's going to not be totally crisp, but that's all right, we like our fabric to look a little softer. So after you press it, you're then going to trim most of your seam allowance off, leaving about an eighth of an inch. And I have a little example over here. So this right here has been trimmed. Let me just 
hold it up a little bit so you can see I just left a little bit on there and if it's not perfectly straight that's fine because we are going to fold it again. So then you're going to take the folded edge with your stitches and you're just going to fold it up and that's going to give you a very tiny hem and then you're just going to stitch it right on that top part where the folded edge is and you can see the finished example is right here. So this is the wrong side. You can see the stitches right along the top. Let's go ahead, flip it over, look at the right side, and you can see it's a very delicate hem. When it comes to interfacing of a garment made out of chiffon, you can go ahead and use your chiffon as the interfacing as well. So I would cut two pieces for the piece that needs to be interfaced. One chiffon would be the main fabric, one chiffon would be the interfacing side. You would just layer them on top of each other and then baste around the perimeter. So the interfacing would be sewn in. Now if you want something a little bit stiffer, instead of the chiffon being the interfacing, you can use organza as the interfacing. Again, it would be basted in. But you just need to be careful on coloring. If, for example, I'm using a light color chiffon, I don't then want to use black organza. You want to match the colors as best you can. I hope these tips help you out the next time you have to sew with chiffon. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.